Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, this interview. We have an amazing guest with us. Her name is Sue Kim, and she is a third level uh, quantum healing hypnosis technique practitioner. Thank you, Sue, for joining us on this interview today. Hello, yeah. Nice to have you with us. So on today's um, interview, we're gonna be discussing three topics. The first is hypnosis. The second is quantum healing hypnosis technique and how is it different than regular hypnosis? And the third is how to use hypnosis for therapy. So I would like for you, Sue, to start with explaining to us what is hypnosis? Well, hypnosis are like a, through the um, changing the brain cycles from beta to alpha or theta and then we can access the subconscious and in QHHT we call it quantum healing hypnosis technique so we are accessing the quantum field so that's different ways of doing it in in the modern world all kinds of different hypnosis are available so okay. basically through the hypnosis we access the subconscious information. So it's as if we're peeling the brain and trying to understand what's hiding on underneath the surface. Is that what you mean by when you refer to as the subconscious? Yes, because we have all kinds of information stored in us, right? And we are only using what they say 5% of our brain power. Mm -hmm. However, about 95% is really untapped. Once we match our brain cycles, not all the older um, uh, days we are using in beta cycle, which is very busy and very shallow. But when we go into uh, past alpha and theta, we can really access entire creations. So it's really vast areas we can explore. So for anyone who's watching that, uh, hasn't heard the differences between alpha, beta, theta, and these different types of brain waves. Can you please explain to us what's the difference between them? Mm -hmm. Beta cycle is normally that when we are awake, we that's the cycle that we call beta cycles. It's ordinary moving state where you uh, either talk with a friend or busy doing something. But alpha is a little lower when we are in reading the books or watching the TV or listening to music or walk in the park. That will be an alpha cycle. That's much lower cycle where you can even get a nice, comfortable, peaceful state as well. Now the next slow one is a theta cycle. That's where we uh, QHHT works. That is where, uh, when we experience it twice a day, basically when we wake up, just before when we fully wake up, the quiet moment, just after dreaming, the quiet moment, that is a theta cycle. We do it automatically. The other one is when we, just before going to sleep in delta, just between that little zone where nothing is really thinking, but there's some images are there that's a very theta cycles that we work on and of course scientists call it it's a different hertz which i don't remember it but it's alpha is the busy state i'm sorry bet, uh, beta is busy state. i don't know why they call alpha and beta it should be alpha beta theta right alpha beta sequence but they call it beta is the awakened state and then the lower is alpha and the, the other one lower is a theta and sleeping state is called delta cycle. I think the the naming aspect of it comes from the uh, the way they discovered the different brain frequencies. So basically, when they discovered alpha first, that's why they put the word alpha to it, and so the order. So you're talking about accessing this naturally, like the theta state, which you're talking about. We access it while we're sleeping. Uh, does that mean that anyone can be hypnotized? Because I, I hear a lot of people saying, you know, this, this wouldn't work on me or this, I wouldn't be able to be hypnotized. Everybody can be hypnotized. And actually, we are all hypnotized most of the time. 
so that what's a really um, dividing part where people cannot go into hypnotizing state or not is because simply the person is controlling the state where they really have an ego centered and control the state where I want to be this way, that way, that way, then the person really cannot access the beautiful the state where we can access all the informations and healings. So it is vitally important that we let go of the expectations and controlling our ego mind. Just let it open and then you can easily can go down to the data cycle, absolutely no problem. It is totally 99% it up to the individual who let go or not go, and then whether they can have a great hypnosis session or not. Anybody can be all hypnotized. That's it's just know. ego controlling is the prevention stuff. So everyone basically is in Everything. control of the session the entire time, and there's no uh, inferiority or uh, suppression from the hypnotist. It's the person themselves is who controls. Person, yeah, person themselves is the controlling one. If they let go and receive an entire thing with a trust and open heart, then everything works. They all go nicely and beautifully into hypnosis and acquire healings, as well as all this universal informations that are available to every one of us. That's good to know. Um, so you're talking about everyone is able to access the state. How long would it take for um, a regular person to access it in a quantum healing hypnosis technique format? In this modality that uh, I am doing, it, Dolores Cannon created, it's called quantum healing hypnosis technique. It takes maybe just maybe five, 10 minutes in the beginning we just relax them, and then it's so too easy. Uh, when the smart people normally say this is way too easy, it shouldn't, it's not something is wrong, right? But however, it's too simple and too easy. Just if you just relax and follow the facilitator or practitioners, and follow with it, and then engage in, then within five ten minutes. Anybody can go into this beautiful state. That's good to know. And then how long would the whole session be from start to finish? When you do Okay, a, um, when we call session, it's actually, there are three parts. The first one is interview. And uh, when you come for a session, then I have to get to know you. So we're going to talk about your life. Uh -huh. so that's gonna take about good two hours minimum. And it depends, it could be two or three hours, however long it takes, mm -hmm. because we need to talk and I need to know about you so that when I meet your higher self, then I can ask a quality questions, right? So that's called interview. And then of course, it's very open conversation with the confidentiality. So therefore, once you're open to the practitioner, we really get into uh, knowing you very much in detail and because uh, everybody has issues right and uh, when they are open and trust practitioner and they okay these are my issues and they talk about it and then it's really helping themselves the more you open the better you help yourself so that interview is really fast learning about the person within two or three hours right and then what's the second stage? You said there's okay, the second stage is the session itself, like a trans part we call. So once the interview is done and the, you lie down on the bed or just comfortable you know, place to lie down, and then that entire process takes about two hours, roughly. So that in two hours, we address to them, your higher self, or higher being, over soul, doesn't matter the name, but that's what it is because we all have a higher beings, knows everything who looks after you from the beginning of the creation up until now and the future. And then they look after, they basically introduce what kind of life uh, you need to see it, uh, very relevant to this current life issue. So you kind of visit that 
And then uh, about the half part of it, we address the, you know, your issues, either that be physical healings or emotional issues or spiritual issues. So that takes about, eight, about two hours. And I bring you out. Stage? Is this the second stage you're, you're talking That's about? That's the second stage, yeah. The first stage is interview. Second stage is trends. Now the third part is the post talk. After the, um, the session's done, uh, I sit down with you and then I talk about, okay, what's been said, what has been done, what kind of healing's been happened. It's kind of summary of it. Mm -hmm. So that takes about half an hour, maybe an hour. So that's how it works. So there are three parts. And you're talking about uh, mm -hmm. a therapy here. What kind of healing is expected from a hypnosis, oh, a hypnosis session? Okay. Um, any, any kind of healing that's required, either physical, emotional, spiritual, any kind of issues that you require and you have staff incorporating with you, providing you are willing and open, of course. When you interrupt, your conscious mind say, hey, hey, hey no, no, that sounds uh, foolish, whatever, then it's not going to work. So when you cooperate with your higher self, of course, all kinds of things are accomplished. So you uh, can you give us examples of um, emotional healing that has come up for someone in, in, in your sessions? Uh, there are so many of them because we are emotional being as well. So everybody has emotional issues, right? So yeah. say, for example, a person was very depressed. This, uh, this lady was very depressed because she was being used by her family. In other words, she was really giving too much to her family. And that whatever earnings she had, she sort of supports them. And it was like a never ending kind of thing. So of, of course, yes. she is in 30 something and she's very depressed now because her biological uh, clock is ticking because now it's about late thirties so that she's thinking, okay, how many more years than now uh, can I have a you know, child bearing time? And now she doesn't even have a boyfriend to marry. So now she's just busy working and supporting family, right? So she's depressed, absolutely. So now we find out through, through the session, through the trends, her herself showed the life, whereas before she was very strong, willpower woman, and she knows what she wants when she, you know, negotiate the business, she was just saying, okay, this is the way it is, it has to be done, and no, no putting down, and her value is very strong. That was like a couple of hundred years ago, she visited that life, and she was very successful, she outspoken everything, and then strong woman, right? Mm -hmm. So from that life that she reviewed, her higher self showed that, now, that time, she was very strong. She voiced out what she feels for, what's correct. But this life, she subsided. She pressed it down. Uh, she wanted to be a good girl, uh, according to the social conditioning. Yeah. So she, her voice was totally gone. That was the reason of depression. So her self shows that now you have to speak out whatever you want to talk about it to your family or whoever that is. And that was a solution in a word, but there are all the other things were accomplished accordingly in that session. So in, in other words, um, or another question would be, would the healing actually be completed during the session or is there any follow-up that has to be done by the practitioner so during the, during the session the healing can be uh, was accomplished one uh, one lady comes to my mind she had a fibromyalgia which is uh, you know pains all over her muscles all over her body and then this one was because the 
in the past life, she was she lost a lot of things. She worked hard mm -hmm. in farming, everything. She worked very, very hard. And because some reason, she lost everything at that life. So in this life, when she met a good man, she really loved this man. But all of a sudden, she has this fibromyalgia was all over. She could not really enjoy the, uh, the relationship. Mm -hmm. So reason was that back then, because she lost, that she loved, right? And in this life, now that she loves this man, she has a fear and it's from last life that okay now i love this man i what about i she has a fears of losing him so in so doing it preventing herself caused the fibromyalgia thing so during the session she was willing to accept the healing and her higher self healed all of that in fact what happened was that she vomited during the session, she had a nose that she vomited. She went to the store a few times. She threw up. And that's what it happens is that actual healing is occurring. The, all the toxins are moving out from the body, right? So that uh, her higher self told her that. I think she, it was about 98% was healed, but a couple more days, it will be completely healed. And she emailed me saying that. So it, it's all gone. I have no more fibromyalgia. So wow. at the session itself, she was already healed 98% and took another couple of days, totally gone. Well, that sounds very profound, like the idea of mm -hmm. someone dealing with a problem, sometimes going to doctors, trying to resolve it and not being able to, but in one session, finding the root cause of it. Um, however, you know, I can hear the critics already talking about, what do you mean by past life? Um, what if someone doesn't believe in a past life? How would they work with their belief in a hypnosis session? This one, uh, you don't have to believe in anything. Uh, you don't have to believe in past life or you don't have to believe in God, nothing. It has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with the religions or your belief systems. It works for everybody because we are a soul, the piece of, you know, the, the source itself. We are all created that way. Regardless whether you believe it or not, it's all there anyway. We live uh, like a hundred times, millions times throughout eons of these creations. So in this lifetime, because maybe the, it's blocked, so understanding isn't there, so that's fine. However, this modality doesn't have any effect on anything. You don't have to believe in anything. The atheist even has a great sessions. Oh, wow. So you've had experiences with people who are... Yeah, the guy said, I don't believe in God. Prove me. Yeah, that's okay. No problem. <laughs> I mean, you know. But then, uh, you know, his higher self says, uh, he, you know, his higher self was very humorous. Well, he thinks that he doesn't believe in God, but he does, you know, all kinds of things, right? So this was very amazing. Doesn't matter what you believe in or not. It's interesting how the, what you're explaining, the higher self, it sounds like it's just a more uh, deeper understanding of, um, of yourself from within. Is that oh. what, what's referred to as the higher self? Higher self is the one who is always with us and that they are always trying to help us by, you know, giving our soft voice, sometimes inspiration or sometimes aha moments or sometimes, wow, I am so brilliant. I understood or that kind of thing. But higher self is always with us. You know, like they have never been apart and they always care for us. And they always ask us, ask. Unless you ask, how can we help you? That's the whole thing. So if there is any problems, just ask. This modality is really opening eyes for everybody. And uh, what do you call it? Like a small, narrow visions of life. Uh, if you have a paradigms of that, then the more you, when you get acquainted with your own higher self, 
your understanding is becoming open to unlimited. You can embrace the entire creations. Well, this, this is very form-fitting for like 2020, what we're going through, this internal transformation. I know Dolores Cannon has been talking about this for over 40 years um, before her passing. But the idea is that um, more people are becoming aware of what's within and wanting to seek what's within. So how could uh, hypnosis be used to understand um, all the things that lie within that are very uh, sort of invisible to the normal person. Does, hypno does hypnosis help in other ways other than healing and past life regression? Absolutely, because this modality uh, is very spiritual, like you uh, not only physical and emotional part, but we are spiritual being. And this modality really opens the spirituality. And the person doesn't believe in God, understands what the God is or creator is or the source is once they experience it. And then their understanding is really there in spirituality where, why we are here? What's this all about? Main core of spirituality, this QHHT really focuses it and touches it. So whoever wants to improve, like especially nowadays, this is what we are going through pandemic. It's a great time where we really go within, inside, and then ask about what are we? Why are we here? What is a life purpose? Why I am working so hard for what? All these questions. You can even you get all this understanding in one session because you get to know the main core of the spirituality. We so, are here for a while, we go, right? But we get to understand why this brief time we are here. And I think that's very important uh, nowadays is to take a step back and uh, observe what's happening to our lives in order for us to understand the meaning of what's happening and then help us move into a different trajectory mm -hmm. um so just so people have a better understanding you were talking about one session um do you have people come for more than one session or how yes, yes there are some people who comes more than one session because at Doris' time she was too busy and that there was so many years of waiting lines. That's why one session was sufficing. However, nowadays, there are practitioners all over the world and helping people to understand. So therefore, we have leisure. And some people could come more often. And then I would normally uh, say maybe six months later or a year later. And then I have a few people who come here and there because life changes all the time right and when you come first time that is kind of uh, uh, breaking the ground kind of you have so many questions on <clears throat> all kinds of uh, areas but once we deal with that and then there are other questions or oh, what about that what about that so yes no problem and they can always come and then delve into more of what you really are it's a great great practice and uh, for some people um, they hear hypnosis and their mind completely goes to uh, street magic and being taken control over and all of that um, what would you say to people who think that hypnosis is a dangerous uh, technique that exposes some people think that it exposes um, them to things that they they shouldn't be exposed to well, there are those kind of uh, a lot of movies and then also a lot of people who entertains this kind of uh, uh, another form of hypnosis. They use it for entertainment purpose. However, uh, this QHHT, it, we don't use any magic. It is very simple, easy relaxations and then exploring your inner world. 
So therefore, there is no, and our practitioners, our duty is always looking after your safety when you are in, in the session. And that's priority for us to look after the safety of it. And uh, so therefore, that, that's a lack of understanding, uh, basically, because the entertainment world creates such a thing. So people think maybe that's what it was, but actuality is not. We are very sincere and very serious practitioners who want to help people. And there's no magic tricks, no such things. And experience yourself. Uh, or find the person who's done it and ask them what that is like and you, you can start from there. That's lovely to hear. So it's not as uh, dangerous as some people... Not at all because our priority, as I said, is uh, keeping the people's safety is always our optimal. That's why Dolores doesn't want us to do any sessions over the phone or the Skype or any electronic way it only has to be in person because during so many hours uh, she doesn't want to risk anybody which I totally can understand because some people I had one more than one actually I one person comes to my mind is that young man came in he had all kinds of uh, you know these uh, toxicities all over his body and bumps all over his body, right? So anyway, um, his um, higher self came in and then they were healing. Of course, his body was moving all over the place, right? Interestingly, his body was sitting on the right bed and of course I am observing it because it's my duty to see he's safe. So he was, his body was moving all over the place and healing was done extremely deep way and then actually the the bed that I was using actually moved around from one one side to all the way to the corner of it so I literally have to follow with my recorder all the way to the wall to prevent him to hitting right and so that when when I saw that I could totally understand why Dolores doesn't want that over the phone or the Skype because who knows, right? What about electricity goes out? Then what? You don't hear and the person is on hypnosis and what to do? And that is really a risky thing. And also the person on, over the other end going through like this physical transformations and you are not there, then what happens? That, yeah, it becomes harder to witness when it's... Oh, that's, yeah, so right. once we... Yeah, in the beginning, the very beginning when I was learning, I thought, why do you know everybody's using online Skype? What is the problem? But when I went through actual thing, I totally understood. Okay, Dolores, I understand, right? So it's in person only in our practice. Especially now with the quarantine and everything, it a lot of people would probably ask you, like, can we do it over the phone? Because they're scared of... Um, what's happening with COVID, so. Yeah, COVID, yes, but in our Ontario, or we, one-on-one -on -one consultation is fine, providing we keep all these uh, uh, cleaning requirement, antiseptic requirement, everything. One-on-one -on -one session has been uh, uh, okayed since May 19, I believe, this year. So we are fine one-on-one. -on -one. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, I, I noticed that you um, you have your own website and that you post uh, some stories that you have from the sessions that you do. Is that one way that you are trying to demystify QHHD to people who have uh, no outside knowledge about it? Uh, my intention is to let people know what what the real thing is happening with people's session. Because when, because it's all different kind of session story that I'm writing in, and then it's also my assignment in this life to write, let people read it and they understand. It's sort of uh, expanding the uh, paradigms for people. Uh, we we know one thing, but however, when I post stories on here, say for example, 
today's person was burst out. This person was sick and she had a car accident mm -hmm. uh, so many decades ago and her bro you know, body was all wrecked, bones are cracked and every muscles, everything torn out and everything. So her body's been repaired by every specialist came in and then they fixed the body. But however, because that, she goes through a lot of you know medications, pains and everything, right? And then her body has to be re-corrected and again and again. So we found out why uh, she was in such accident because that was her curiosity. And then we found out it was her contract. <clears throat> when she came to this world prior to that, she signed on dotted line that, okay, I will offer my body for medical students to advance for medical knowledge. So she signed the dotted line and then accident was the cause of it. In order to do that, her body has to be wrapped so that doctor has to come and then they have to work on it. So that's one way she volunteered her body to be the experimental purpose for medical thing. Wow. And now she understood why now. So her pain, she understands now it's better because as soon as understanding comes, then it's less painful because you know why you have that and you know why you are going through difficulties. So it's kind of a surrendering and accepting with more positive way. So that's one example of story I am putting out. Let people read it so that, oh, this is the, oh, it's one way this person is offering herself for human evolutions. And then when they read something else, okay, oh, this is the, this, this story, I understand. And then they keep reading it in sort of a, their understanding becomes wider, wider, wider. And that is my purpose for people to open their horizons wide. It's like when you become, when you start opening up and understanding things from yeah. that perspective, mm -hmm. it's, um, it becomes easier to see that there isn't anything that happens by chance and that things always could have a positive twist, even when they look so negative. Exactly. On the exactly. Nothing's happening by coincidence. It, it, there's no coincidences because it's, everything is all planned. And as soon as, we, it's a matter of understanding. Once we understand, things are so much more easier. And then we can understand other people's trouble in a much, much better way. And we can open our heart to listen their story with more empathy, more wisdom. So it is a vast way of uh, expanding human consciousness. That's my experience. That's very lovely. Thanks for sharing that. I'm pretty That's sure that a lot of people are going through their own transformation at this point, and uh, it's good to open up um, their mindsets that there are other people interested in learning about themselves, and they could do the practice themselves, whether it's uh, through a session or they could read about other people going through their experiences to learn from. Yeah, that's a great way of opening your heart. I mean, we keep hearing open your heart, open heart. But how? When you become totally understanding what's all about, that's a huge opening. And then when you get to know other people's stories, then it's another huge opening. And then we eventually have a heart as big as to embrace entire creation, right? So this is really marvelous way of doing um i don't know other hypnosis all i know is so i can only speak from that experience and then whoever wants to expand their understanding and heart come for a session that is just a turning point it's like a opening the door to the wider right it's, it's, like it's a, really it's great way. It's yeah, exploring. Self-exploration. Oh, exploring. Exploration is the thing because like a, 
we no longer have a nine, nine to five business work anymore, right? It's kind of offices all closed, we work from home and all that. But it's it's no longer like a, you work for someone else or the, you work for yourself. Once you understand why we are working for that and why we are having trouble with the people who work together, why we have a trouble with our family member mm -hmm. or friends, once we pay attention, because once you have a session, first of all, you get to understand, oh, that's what it was. Then you can pay attention to other people's problem with more uh, deeper way. When someone complains about it, instead of, oh, she's always complaining. It's not anymore. Okay, why is it? You pay attention to that. And then you start to hear, deeply what the person is trying to say mm -hmm. and then you get to understand oh, okay mostly it boils all down lack of love that nobody loves the person that is the main issue actually right when there is love people can endure lack of finances or lack of something but as long as the love isn't there no matter how much money we have we are always lonely and uh, but once we have love, that you doesn't have to have a person to love, but once you love yourself, you end up loving anything around you, everybody around you, because you are me, I am you, <laughs> right? Kind of I ident identify with everybody with me. Oh, her problem, yeah, her problem is my problem. What about his problem? Yeah, he's got that. Oh, he's got same problem that I have. We can kind of. Uh, associate with that and then of course once it's my problem then of course we become more understanding and more loving right so it's a huge yeah thanks for sharing this sounds very uh forward thinking it's like the future of humanity and we are we are going to that <laughs> that's the evolution thanks Indeed. for sharing that was very um insightful I wanted to ask you if someone was to want to take a session with you, uh, what are some of the things they need to do before doing a session? In order to prepare or in order to have a successful session, I would normally suggest that uh, open a channel, open the communication channel with your own higher self. I mean, you are speaking to your higher self all the time, but intentionally talk to your higher self. And either you can write a journal, like uh, you become, you become your really you, it, no facade or nothing. Just talk to your higher self like a, the best friend you're trusting and confidential, and you can talk to the person without any barriers. So talk to the higher self, mm -hmm. either writing or in the prayer form or meditation form. Or walking. Help. Meditation helps. <laughs> meditation really helps. Or when you go out for a walk and then talk to your higher self, verbally or quietly, it doesn't matter. You have intention to talk your own higher self. That is the key. Mm -hmm. And then before you come, I normally ask people to be away from uh, mind-altering drugs. If person use ayahuasca or marijuana or that kind of things, uh, refrain it for 72 hours. No caffeine for 24 hours. No alcohol for 72 hours. Because it affects the relaxations that person has to go through. So to get the best result, mm -hmm. avoid all that. And write to or communicate with your higher self every day at least once and have an intention to be open and trusting the entire process yeah because some people actually fear the process so this maybe might help them to relax before the session right yes relax is the best thing because when they come with the whole load of coffee intake and have donuts and then puff the marijuana come to me and say, okay, here I am, I want to go hypnosis. No, I can't. 
because he, is, he or she is not ready. And if they are ready, the information coming out is not correct because we understand the higher self is talking, but of course it filtered down by conscious mind. When conscious mind in control and filtering out, then of course information isn't correct. So it's not going to be successful, right? Well, that's good to know. So for okay. everyone who's interested, they Coming have... Coming from experience. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, I've had uh, some people came from Mar Mariana last... I mean, even though I asked the person, stop using it. However, those days was 24 hours. I, I tried it. She came and she puffed every day, every kind of few hours. And then she told me that she never... She, 24 hours wait. Well, when in the session, her herself, you know, flapped out the truth. <laughs> she used the Mariana last night too, and all this, right? And of course, she had a great session. Is there any last messages you'd like to uh, give to people who are interested in, in doing a session? Um, what are some advice that you'd give them? The best thing is experience it yourself. Only then you know what it's like. I mean, no matter how many books you read, like uh, some people read uh, many books of Doris Cannon, watch YouTube or other YouTubes or other practitioners doing YouTube. doesn't mean anything because your life is unique. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you come experience your life, I mean, forget the rest of it. That's why I say, let the expectations out because it's not you. Your life is you and you have a unique life experience. Only you have to experience it. Then you only know that what is waiting for you. It's like a always better, positive, yeah. exploring further, right? That's true. So yeah. for anyone and interested, it. Hmm? so for anyone interested, um, Maybe I can give you the links to, um, to get to do a session yourself. So there's two ways to connect with Sue. Uh, the first way to connect is through uh, qhhttoronto.com. That's one uh, website that Sue runs herself. And uh, they can contact you through the Contact Us page on the website. And the other website, um, which is the official QHHT website, is called qhhtofficial.com. And over there, you can search for practitioners um, and find Sue's contact information. Yeah, we are all listed up there who are active. So uh, active uh, li uh, practitioners are usually have a picture on it. And the practitioner who is not active, they don't have picture on it. So mm -hmm. that's the way you can distinguish. So every one of us in global network, we are all listed. Whoever you feel comfortable with, go to it. I mean, because you are living in Toronto, you don't, doesn't necessarily mean come to Toronto practitioners. You can go to any practitioners who are more like, a, you feel more uh, uh, harmony mm -hmm. with, you, you are drawn to and search for that. And then your higher self always matches the, the correct practitioners for you. Mm -hmm. So whoever draws to you, go to it. I mean, if you have a car, you can go to Quebec, you can go to Vancouver, no problem, right? Because we are all using same modality. So therefore, whoever you go to, the, the modality is all the same, technique is all the same. Well, that's lovely. Thank you so much, Sue, for uh, being part of this interview. And... Um appreciate all the information that you were able to provide us and hopefully um, you'll be able to share more of your sessions with us on your website and we'll be uh, looking out for those in the future. That'd Thank be a you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Good day.